Recently, I made a tutorial in Unreal Engine on how to use VDB explosions. These explosions are offered by the Pixel Lab as a, a token of appreciation and also as a support for my channel. And if you guys would like to support the channel further, please have a look at their products. The link is in the description below. They do some fantastic VFX work. Now, this tutorial is all about the shader setup and the import, uh, how, to, you know, how to import VDBs in Blender. We've got here a very basic scene in Blender and bringing over the VDB is going to be easy comparing to compare, comparatively to making the shader for it. So I'm going to press Shift A on the keyboard and then I'm going to select Import Open VDB. Now in here I'm going to go over to the folder where I have my VDB saved and you can see this is a VDB made out of frames from frame 1 to frame 360. Now bear that in mind, you know, keep that number in mind because it's going to be important the 360. Now, when we select the first frame over here, and I'm going to press the import over VDB, there is no option to import it as a sequence, but instead you can tell it that you want this to play as a sequence, and Blender is smart enough to know, uh, the, you know, to load the sequence after you do this. Now, when, you, when you've uh, imported it, you're not going to see anything. Uh, it really, uh, I mean, the first thing that you've got to do is assign a material to it. So we're in the material tab for the VDB. I'm going to press the new button over here. And I'm going to rena rename this to VDB material, just so we can have it saved in there. And we're still not seeing anything, and that's because frame 01 in our sequence basically had no real information. So I'm going to go over here to the data tab, and I'm going to click the sequence button like that, which now means that we've, you know, we're telling Blender that we're using this as a sequence. The problem is that we're first of all we're not loading any frames so we're loading zero frames that needs to be changed to 360 and already you can see that something has showed up now now another thing is that we get these visual glitches here and there and this is because also you know our material is a principal volume over here and we've got to work out how to change the settings the density and so on and also where is our vdb uh, sort of like uh, sitting in the scene right now, I do have a point light above here, so if I click this button, you can see that there's a point light um, somewhere around here, which is allowing this VDB to cast a shadow, but currently it's kind of glitching out a little bit. That's not really a problem. We're going to be able to fix that in just a little bit. But uh, more about the information that comes with a VDB. So this particular VDB has a density value, a scatter value, and a temperature value. We're going to be able to use these three to construct our look and feel for our explosion. Now, if we scrub this sort of like offset here, we'll be able to see this animation play back and forth as we do this. Uh, by the way, the Blender is currently running in a, uh, what well, is basically running as cycles with GPU compute, just so you know. So I would recommend you using this because if you switch this over to uh, EV, uh, this is how the VDB will look like. It's going to be very low quality as opposed to Blender cycles. So definitely using cycles for this is going to make it look a lot better now i'm going to go back into my data over here just so we can keep this open i'm also going to like go on the scrubbing on the timeline all the way to zero and you can see that if we're at, at frame zero we can't really see anything of the vdb sequence because we're telling it to load frame zero again so if i go to frame one again nothing is showing up but as i play this around you can see the vdb being created Right now, it doesn't really look much like an explosion. It just looks like there's a lot of smoke in there. Now, by the way, this plane, it doesn't matter where we're going to place it. We're still getting like these artifacts from the geometry of the VDB. Anyway, back to the VDB itself. We need to set up the material shader in here so we can get some nice colors and also, you know, a nice effect of the fire and everything else that's built up within. So in order for us to do this, we're going to add a few nodes connected to the uh, color. Well, not the color, sorry, the density, the temperature, the emission, and so on. The first thing we want to do is define density and to do this we're going to be adding an attribute node right in here and by the way just make sure that blender did actually drop in a principal volume for you and if it didn't just delete the principal bstf and add the principal volume and then hook that over into the volume node right here once we have the attribute node you'll notice that it has a name here so we're going to type in density which is telling blender to use the density of the vdb itself and this, we could plug the um, fact over here into the density, but that means that we actually don't really have any control over it. So if I plug that in there, it's basically now looking at the density value and that's it. And it's not really doing anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a math node over here. And then we're going to drop this in here, change it to a multiply node instead of an add node. 
now we can obviously play around with this value which means that we can add more or less um density right and we're gonna keep it with a value of one for now but you could obviously you know turn this up a notch if you'd like but just bear in mind that if you turn it too high up the density will basically just become so vast that it's like gonna cast shadows everywhere so let's just leave it to a value of one for now now another thing that we can do is we can also use the temperature and the um scatter so i'm just gonna copy this node and uh, drag it over um here I'm going to change this to temperature okay so we can actually start sampling the temperature as well and I would like the temperature to run through with the um, density so we can control the density and the temperature well the, the we would like to add whatever we're adding temperature we're also going to try to um, multiply that with the density so for us to do this I'm going to duplicate this node this multiply node gonna drop it um somewhere in here and i'm going to be connecting the fact of the temperature into this second value like that but this is having the side effect of it's like really eating up a lot of our density because right now it's multiplying this by this and it's not it's sort of like almost subtracting because the temperature itself is not a high value it's not a high enough value what we're going to do is instead we're going to add a color ramp over here in order for us to be able to blend this temperature a lot better uh first thing first things first i you know i'm going to leave it as a black to white and i am going to change this to a b spline but just putting it in there and you can see if you you know if you change these sort of settings you can bring over some more of that density or you can reduce it but i would like us to switch this color ramp to be able to have opacity on it as well and i'll show you what i mean just now so when, whenever you look over here we can toy around with the, with the actual settings of the color ramp more in depth so instead of using color we're going to use the alpha right and then we're going to have to define this particular gradient as an alpha as well so to do this you're basically going to select the uh, black color over here and then i'm going to click this button and then just turn over the alpha all the way to zero and that's going to help us achieve the effect that we would like so you can see now how this is sort of like playing out as we um use these particular settings now over with the now we need to bring in the scattering of the color so we, you know we've got scattered in here as well which is a x y and z value i'm going to copy this attribute again copy paste but i'm going to type in here scatter and now with the scatter in place we can start adding some emission strength so we're going to put another multiply oh sorry not that we're going to copy and paste this multiply and with this we can plug in the uh fac of the um of this um um scatter node like that i want to put this over into the emission strength like i've said but now i would like to also use the uh, temperature over in here so something like that okay um oh let me just make sure that it's also into the fact yeah it actually is okay there we go um and now we're also going to want to add an emission color so in order to, for us to do this i'm going to put a color ramp again something like that and and what i want to do is i want to create i want to add a multiply node to go into this particular color uh ramp so i'm going to copy and paste the multiply drop it in here like that and we can now play around with the intensity of this so maybe maybe take this up to like 500 or something like that but we do need to get some colors over here and we do need connect obviously to connect the color ramp so i'm just going to put that into the emission color um, like that now so far we're not really seeing any change or anything really going on um, but we're going to leave this as a linear and i'm going to add a color maybe somewhere around here i'm going to put this into a bright red and then i'm going to add another point but i'm going to put this over into here and we're going to do like an orange type of color maybe yeah maybe something like that for now I'm not sure maybe something a bit lighter so let's just try saturation yeah maybe something like that so it's a bit lighter maybe that will work now again nothing's really changing as of yet with these settings uh because what I want to also do is multiply this node with a Fresnel so I'm just going to copy the multiply and add it over here Fresnel sorry it's actually called Fresnel so we're going to look for a Fresnel put that over in there and then I'm going to put the value of the Fresnel to like a 1.4 or 1.3 something like that 
Um, we're also going to want to control this emissive uh, strength. So I am going to be looking at the temperature. So I want to, sorry, I'm going to add another multiply node over into here. And then I'm going to push this number to maybe like a 20 or something like that, just to see if that's going to, you know, like how we're going to bring that uh, value up. We do want to copy this as well. So again, copy the multiply, paste it over into here, into this attribute. And now you can see that we're getting some effect over there. So we're going to increase this value further, uh, maybe like a 50. Now let's just play the timeline and see what happens. We just don't have enough density within our particular uh, node in here. So we do need to bring more of that density up. Now I am going to... Play, you know, play around a little bit with the anti-isotropic to make it a bit darker at the top. Um, and then I want to play with the black body intensity. I am going to start increasing this value, maybe to something like that, 10,000. Now, the color we're going to leave white so that basically we're just getting the a bright sort of color uh, there. So we don't really want to play that with that at all. I'm also going to push the temperature to 3,000, maybe something like that. And now let's just play the animation. As you can see... We still don't have a lot of density. So density is where we're suffering. I'm just going to add a bit more density. Maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe about 200, something like that. Um, yeah, now let's play it again. Play the scene. I think it's, it's not too bad, but we're just not getting enough strength within our fire. So I am going to have to play a bit more with the strength of this. So let's just see uh, what value probably works best. Or depending on the VDB that you're going to be using. Sorry, I think that's... Yeah, see, see, this is not really going to have any effect because we're still, you know, like the density is also affecting that scattering color. So let me just try and increase our emissive strength. Um, so now we can get a bit more emiss emissiveness inside the volume itself. And guys, do remember that if you do support the, if you want to support the, the, the platform, you can do so on Patreon where you get access to all of my projects that I have for sale. So just for one subscription, you basically get everything. And also you can go to my website, 3D Project Masters or my Unreal Engine uh, Marketplace and purchase any of my projects if you'd like to support the channel. But let's get back to the tutorial. Also, very quick tip, whenever you open a Blender file with a VDB file that it was not on your computer originally, you will have to go into the VDB itself or re-import it also when you open a project that already has a VDB. You have to click the VDB and click this folder over here in order to open the path to where the VDB is on another computer. Otherwise, you won't be able to get it running. So just bear that in mind. That's really kind of the setup for this. And now what you really want to do is just keep on pushing with these settings until you get the results that you'd like. Uh, obviously, this is going to be in the project file that I'm um, putting forward. You'll be able to find everything you need in order to, you know, get this up and running. You'll have this setup. Now, some things that I would like to give you, you know, some pointers here is that if you go over into the render settings over for cycles and you do actually increase the viewport steps to in volume in the volume quality, maybe to like 10. This means that the uh, VDB will perform very, very uh, nicely as opposed to, you know, um, uh, running it at one but if you also want a very high quality rendering i would suggest doing step rend rate render to like 0 0.01 or 0 0.5 that's going to give you a higher higher resolution on the vdb itself as opposed to for example using 10 so just be be mindful of that you can also use this with ev so if you switch over to ev you should be able to use it now i would recommend using tile size of two because by default it's at eight so you can see that's really low quality but if you put this over to uh, like two that should be that should give you a decent enough quality bear in mind obviously that the vdb fire will not be producing any sort of light when it explodes in ev as in cycles, it actually will, so that's fine. And also, obviously, in cycles, you have to use a composite in order to get the bloom effect and everything. Um, but you can also, you know, play around with these sample samples because I think by default, they're down to 64 on EV. So you can put this to 256 to get a better look. But this is where, obviously, this is important for you to, you know, like, for example, disabling polymetric shadows. This is how it's going to look like. So you're going to have to enable that in order to get you know nicer detail onto the vdb itself but obviously it's a lot better to to play the animation within ev even though it's not extremely um uh, performant either but yeah i would definitely recommend you stick with cycles 
So that, yeah, that's the, that's basically it. Now, if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can get the project files obviously from the description below. So if you want to uh, help the help my channel, just have a look on Patreon and see if you want to actually become a subscriber. Uh, I would like to extend my thank you to all of my Patreons, people that support me on a, on a monthly basis. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.